All right, so a big and somewhat controversial question, what actually counts as a compact smartphone in 2023? Well, the definition of a mini mobile is getting broader all the time because these days sniffing out a smartphone that isn't an absolute whopper is about as easy as teaching James Corden how not to be an annoying c womble. Smartphones under six inches are pretty bloody rare these days, but I swear to God they do actually exist. And technical innovations mean that we also have bendy blowers these days which can easily be stashed in a pocket, a bag or, well, wherever you fancy shoving it. So here's a lovely wee roundup of some of my favourite compact smartphones right now in 2023. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now one of the few compact flagship phones that you can bag yourself right now is Google's Pixel 7, a 6.3 inch sport on a gorgeous and now iconic design. And yes, I know, I know, I know, 6.3 inches isn't particularly mini or compact, but believe me, compared with most of the flagships, the Pixel 7 is comfortable to fondle and easy to use one-handed. One of the highlights of the Pixel 7 is that 50 meg primary camera sensor, which is capable of capturing gloriously natural shots at any time of day, although you don't get the excellent telephoto shooter that Google reserved for the Pixel 7 Pro model. The Pixel 7 is powered by Google's fresh Tensor G2 chipset, which offers an incremental improvement over the original. It's no Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 and the Pixel can occasionally get rather toasty under pressure, but it will generally handle everything you need. As for the media chops, well, this flagship serves up some stunning AMOLED screen tech and a respectable stereo speaker setup. And then factor in the wireless charger and the fact that Google supports its smartphones for years and years and years, and of course those excellent Pixel exclusive features, and you've got yourself a brilliant all-round blower which costs a lot less than most other flagships. But no worries if your money's too tight for that Pixel 7 shenanigans because you can always save yourself a few quid and bag yourself a Pixel 7a instead. Despite its cheaper Askin price, the Pixel 7a is almost just as good as the Pixel 7, with the added bonus that the display is a dinky 6.1 inches, although those fatter bezels surrounding the screen means, to be fair, it's not really any smaller. Those materials aren't as premium, but the Pixel 7a looks just as stunning as its flagship bros, and the hand feel here is truly magnificent. The brains of this mini mid-ranger is once again the Tensor G2, and yes, this does once again mean that the phone gets a bit warm to the touch at times, but the Pixel 7a can happily run anything you chuck at it, even games like Genshin. That OLED screen is another 90Hz slice of eye please in heaven, while the stereo speaker setup ain't too shabby. And the software side is just as satisfying, with those same stock Android vibes, the same excellent security and privacy features, and years of updates to look forward to. Plus, you will struggle to find a better smartphone snapper at this sort of price. Between the fresh 64 meg quad bay camera sensor and the Tensor's slick image processing smarts, you will once again be treated to great looking pics, even in some pretty rough conditions. However, sadly, battery life ain't as great here on the Pixel 7a as it is in some other phones in this roundup, including the excellent Zenfone 10, which doesn't just last for longer, it's also more compact. This sub 6 inch smartphone is absolutely adorable and easily the most miniature mobile of 2023 so far, boasting glorious hand feel and effortless one handed action. In fact, the only problem is it's so dinky and lightweight that occasionally you'll have it in your pocket, you'll be strutting your way down the street and suddenly you'll do the whole trouser slapping. Oh, bollocks, where's my phone? Someone's nicked my phone. Oh, no, wait, no, it's, it's still in there. And definitely do not underestimate this phone over its diminutive stature. The Zenfone 10 is a proper flagship blower, no questions. Packing Qualcomm's Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset for supremely beefcake performance while the battery life is absolutely sublime, among the very best in this roundup in fact. I'm also a fan of the super sharp, eye-poppingly bright OLED screen and those surprisingly punchy speakers. And extra marks for the surprisingly stock Android vibes on the Zenfone 10 as well, but don't expect the same level of software support as what you'll get from those Pixels, because ASUS is only promising two years of OS updates and three years of security updates. Not bad, but not as good. And that camera tech isn't quite as good as the Pixel phones either, struggling in more taxing conditions, but if you want something that is proper Wii, then look no further. Motorola also surprised us in September last year by launching its own affordable mini smartphone, the Edge 30 Neo. 
For a UK price of just 350 quid, you can staffle yourself a slick media machine with PLED screen and Dolby Atmos stereo speakers. And it's good news for gamers too, because despite the reasonable price, this blower can just about handle Genshin Impact and other intense Android games, courtesy of the Snapdragon 695 chipset and the stock Android finish. You will have to scale the graphics back though. That camera tech is sadly more basic than the Pixel 7a, but the Moto Edge 30 Neo does a decent enough job if conditions aren't cack. Video recording does top off at 1080p however, which is a bit poo. More impressive is just how fast the Neo charges up when you bung a cable in it, and you've also got wireless charging support if you've got an inexplicable fear of cables. That's a feature that's still pretty rare at this sort of price point. So overall, this Motorola phone is a solid option if you're after something small without knackering your savings account. And it'll certainly attract some glances down the boozer as well with that very bright, very peri design. Now if you are more tempted by a spot of iOS action instead of Android, then check out Apple's iPhone 13 mini. This 5.4 inch titch is undoubtedly my favourite of Apple's flagship smartphones because not only is it pleasingly hand friendly but also it packs basically the same specs as the regular iPhone 13 and it's the least ridiculously overpriced of all of the Apple flagships. And yes you can get the fresh new iPhone SE third generation for considerably cheaper but that would be serious folly. I mean it, right? If the iPhone 13 mini is an all-inclusive fortnight on some sun-kissed tropical island, well the iPhone SE is a wet weekend on Wandsworth Common with someone repeatedly booting you in the crotch. But anyway, more on all that shenanigans in a bit. Unfortunately, the iPhone 13 mini does spot the same weird retro brick-like design as its bigger siblings, but in this form factor it's not uncomfortable to clutch, while one-handed use is refreshingly simple. Apple has finally toughened up its handsets so they stay fresh and scratch free with the added bonus of full water resistance. It's not all good news sadly, the OLED screen does top off at 60Hz and you still have that ridiculous Dr. Robotnik moustache notch to contend with. But still performance is top draw and the battery life is good enough to see you through a fairly busy day. And I was impressed with the dual lens rear camera setup as well which is dependable at most times of the day and does a bang up job for your home movies. So definitely check out my full in-depth iPhone 13 mini review if you want to know more. And yeah, if you are after an iPhone, well definitely try and spend that extra cash on the mini rather than resorting to the new iPhone SE. It's the smartphone equivalent of herpes. Seriously, one of the happiest moments of 2022 for me so far was finishing my review of this bag of bollocks and ripping my sim right out of it again. What's so bad about it? Well, take your pick from the outdated design, the horrendously bad battery life, that woefully inadequate camera tech, the frankly insulting amount of storage which isn't expandable, the ugly display, the list just goes on and on but hey it does have wireless charging support and the same A15 chipset as the iPhone 13 mini so that's nice. Kind of like sprinkling some glitter on a steaming dog turd. Now if you're a massive gaming fan or you fancy yourself a bit of a pro when it comes to photography, you might be swayed by Sony's pleasingly dinky Xperia 5 smartphones. The Xperia 5 Mark IV is a more compact 6.1 inch version of the Xperia 1 flagship. You've got almost the exact same hardware including another stunning cinema wide 120Hz OLED screen with bugger all notches or floating apple turds obstructing your view. Plus Sony's usual upscale and smarts can bring low res video to life boosting the contrast and resolution for more lifelike results. Gamers too are well serviced by the slick performance and Sony's excellent set of mobile gaming features. The Xperia 5 Mark IV can blaze through Call of Duty Mobile with stunning 120 frames per second visuals. However, this handset does heat up under duress, partly the fault of the older Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chipset, so you won't want to push it too hard or game for hours at a time. If you prefer a nice simple straightforward point and shoot style camera experience to fiddling around with lots of settings making sure you get just the right output, well, you'll definitely get on better with the likes of the Pixel or the iPhone. On the other hand, if you want a proper DSLR style setup, well the Xperia 5 Mark IV is going to be so far up your alley there's a good chance it'll become permanently stuck. You can certainly get some slick looking pics with Sony's blower and some stylistic video too if you use Cinema Pro. It's a lot of fun to piddle about with on your travels. And if one of your biggest problems in life is having far too much lovely cash wadged inside of your wallet or stuffed underneath your mattress, well no worries, an easy way of getting rid of tons of it in one go is by buying a bendy blower. And the good news is not all foldable phones are whopping great massive bricks like the Galaxy Z Fold. For instance, the Motorola Razr 40 Ultra is ridiculously wee when it's all folded up, 
so you can shove it anywhere you like. Although certain bodily orifices may be a literal stretch. The big whoop for this razor generation is the supersized external screen which supports any app out there. With mixed results naturally but it's refreshing being able to switch albums in Deezer or do a quick Google search or whatever without bothering to flip this adorable bugger open. You've also got some decent widget support and even some silly little games to kill a couple of minutes while your Ginsters cheese and onion pasty is being blasted in the microwave. However, whip the Motorola Razr 40 Ultra open and you've got a massive 6.9 inch LTPO OLED screen for playing games, enjoying a bit of the Netflixes, whatever you fancy. With up to 165Hz refresh so everything stays as smooth as my bonsaw smothered in lard. This latest Moto Razr is powered by Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 so it can handle Genshin Impact, PUBG, any title you chuck at it without collapsing into a wheezy heap. The battery life is a bit better for this generation too, although that camera tech is still merely fine and the asking price, well it's not bad for a foldable but it still ain't exactly cheap. So as much as I love this handset, it's certainly in for anyone on a budget. And another brilliant option which is similar to that Motorola Razr phone is the Oppo Find N2 Flip. And this dinky bendy blower magically expands in your hand to a proud 6.8 inches with only a subtle bit of crease action thanks to Oppo's clever ass flexian hinge. That internal display is bright and punchy while you also get a ruddy huge cover screen with a proper aspect ratio that would be perfect for running apps. So it's just kind of a shame then that you can't actually run any apps on it. Although you can get snarled at by a malevolent bunny or reply to messages with some short snappy pre-written statement if you don't actually like the person enough to bother typing stuff. The Oppo Find N2 Flip also boasts more than enough grunt to run the latest games, you've got superb battery life for a compact foldable and some pretty decent camera tech too, so overall I like it a lot. And Samsung also offers its own compact foldable in the form of the Galaxy Z Flip 4 which will empty your wallet to the tune of around a grand. This dishes up a similar design to the Moto and Oppo efforts but with Samsung's One UI launcher slapped on top of Android. The 6.7 inch internal OLED is an absolute beaut as usual, despite that all too obvious crease, while you once again have a dinky external display for checking notifications and the like. Performance is solid even for gaming, while the Z Flip 4 also packs a pretty decent 12 meg camera for snapping your everyday existence. And unlike the other compact foldables I just mentioned, the Galaxy Z Flip 4 is IPX8 water resistant, which is kind of bonkers for a bendy blower. But bear in mind that Samsung is set to launch the Galaxy Z Flip 5 at the end of this month, hopefully with a less gappy hinge, boosted performance, maybe even some upgraded camera tech. And at the very least that will mean you'll be able to pick up the Galaxy Z Flip 4 for a cheaper price just before that launch. So it's up to you whether you want to save a few bucks or get the latest freshest tech. If you'd rather go for a more traditional Samsung blower then have a squint at the Galaxy S23. This 6.1 incher is one of very few compact phones to actually emerge in 2023 and in most ways it is a fantastic flagship. One handed use isn't an effort and there's even a one handed mode if you're still struggling and despite those flattish edges the S23 is comfortable to grow up. Samsung's design is smart if a little bit basic, you've got a decent selection of colours and also it is IP68 water and dust resistant. And Samsung has once again nailed the media chops here with a gorgeous 120Hz OLED screen that pumps bright poppy visuals right at your face holes. And hallelujah, praise the baby Jesus, Samsung finally got rid of all of that Exynos bollocks and replaced it with a good bit of Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. So performance is nice and nippy no matter what you're up to. Not only does this deliver some excellent gaming experiences, but it means that the Galaxy S23 boasts much improved battery life compared with the S21 and S22. Samsung's 50 meg camera tech is recycled from last year sadly, so it's not quite as good as some other recent flagships which boast larger sensors, especially when it comes to low light photography. But that we grumble aside, this is a great package in a compact form factor. And as with the other phones here, I've fully tested it. My full review is live right now here on TechSpert. And last up, another smartphone that just about qualifies as compact. It's certainly one of the easier to use one-handed smartphones of 2023. I am talking about the Xiaomi 13. That glass design is hardy and also miraculously smudge proof with a lovely light green finish. And when you flip it over, you can't help but fall in love with that 6.3 inch 120 Hz OLED display 
which spaffs out crisp, punchy visuals complete with HDR 10 Plus and Dolby Vision stream and support. And the Xiaomi 13 is once again powered by Qualcomm's Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset, so that performance is just mwah, and a little bit of mwah, boosted by loads of great tools and features to help keep gamers ahead of the competition. And even when you lean really hard on the Xiaomi 13 by boosting Genshin Impact's graphics to top levels, that cooling system keeps things from getting toasty. You've got a respectable stereo speaker setup, although like most premium phones there's no headphone jack and no memory card support. For your photo and video needs, the Xiaomi 13's 50 meg camera sensor performs admirably, even in the evenings. And it's backed by ultra-wide and telephoto options, like all of the very best flagships. And that right there, my lovelies, is my full roundup of the best compact-ish phones you can grab yourself right now. And these are all blowers that I've personally tested out, so if I've missed out your own personal favourite, well definitely let us know down in the comments below. Please do plug subscribe and ding that notification bell for more on the latest and greatest tech, and have yourselves a ruddy wonderful rest of the week. Cheers everyone, love you!